Hey guys, if you've seen my Way of the Goldfish video, then that will give you a very simple mental uh, tactic or trick to help you to cut out blunders by analysing your enemy's position uh, better and also analysing your own position. It's just a way of looking at the board as though you're seeing it for the very first time. Now in this video, I'd like to take it just one level deeper to, uh, to see how uh, we can look further into a position and to help you to identify uh, moves that you might normally miss. And in this game, this is a rapid 30 minute game I just played this morning uh, against a player rated just under 1500. And uh, in this game, I actually miss a really, really awesome winning move. So what we want to do is we want to see how we can extend that goldfish approach to help you to find moves that you might otherwise not spot. So we'll start, we'll just go through the game quickly and then we'll, we'll rewind to the point where there was a, an awesome move. Okay, so we have e4, e5 and knight to c3. This is the Vienna game. This is what I'm playing at the moment as white. And we have knight to f6 which invites the Vienna Gambit and f4. Now in this situation, my opponent played a move that I haven't really seen before in this, which is bishop to b4. And it's not a great move because it allows me to capture on uh, e5 and hit the knight. So I've used one of my wing pawns to capture in towards the center. So now I have three pawns in the center for the time being. My opponent only has one. So not a great move. Now my opponent captures on uh, c3, captures the knight. So I've got a couple of options here. I've got two pieces that are on prees. So I could capture the bishop with one of two pawns or I could capture the knight. Now I actually made the wrong move here. That the, um, the best move would actually was uh, d takes c3. And uh, I actually played pawn takes knight and the problem with that move is that it allows bishop takes pawn okay now i'm still in a reasonable position here i've still got two cent central pawns compared to my opponent's one central pawn however the other way around if i'd have captured with the pawn um, i would have still have had the threat against the knight and i'd have still had all three pawns there so basically i've just kind of given up this pawn and uh, allowed my enemy to uh, solidify his position to some degree. Now he's kind of ready to castle, okay? So what I'm thinking at this point is I'd like to stop him castling. So I play uh, knight to f3 because there's a risk here because this diagonal is open. There's a danger of bishop to h4 check. And if my knight wasn't there, then I'd have been forced to play g3 really, which is not too bad. But I decided to uh, try and... Uh, Put that off so if bishop goes there i can then take with the knight and if queen recaptures which she probably would i can play g3 then but this is okay and now d6 is played and i bring my bishop out to uh, look at the f7 pawn okay now bishop comes out to pin the knight and i'm not too concerned about that so i just castle kingside putting my rook onto this nice semi-open f file so if black castles that way I've got some pressure on their position already and now bishop comes down with check I'd already seen that so I just moved my king to h1 and now the bishop moves back to e5 and this is actually the position where there was a really really good move okay um, but we'll come back to this so the move I played was good I played d4 this pawn is defended by my queen so the bishop can't capture and I'm still bearing in mind that there's a pin on this knight here, so the knight can't move. Okay, and this is a good move. You know, I'm gaining space in the middle, I'm solidifying my control of the center, and I'm kicking my opponent's bishop, which gains a tempo. And at this point, we've both got two minor pieces out in the board, but in terms of imbalances, I've got a nice strong center, and I've already castled my king. And I've got my rook onto a semi-open file. So it's all looking good at this point. 
So now I play c3 to uh, defend the d2 pawn and now black castles. I bring my queen out to b3. This is doing a couple of things. I've got pressure now against f7. So this is preventing the rook from coming across to e8, which the rook would like to do at some point, but that would come with check and then I'd win the exchange as well. <clears throat> and additionally, my queen's also looking at the b7 pawn. So black here plays a6, which is slightly odd. So I grab the pawn on b7, and now the knight moves, this is really the only move, um, moves out of the way with a discovered defense by the queen on the rook, so I can't capture the rook. Um, I do, however, have two attackers on the a6 pawn. So I, I, I thought for a little while about that, decided not to capture the pawn. At this point, I just play b3, potentially allowing my uh, dark square bishop to come out and look up towards the f8 square. And now knight comes in to uh, attack my bishop. So I don't really want knight takes bishop and then to recapture with a pawn because that would kind of mess up my pawn structure a little bit. My pawn structure is looking pretty solid at this point. So at this time, I decide to go in and grab the extra pawn on a6. Now the queen moves. And now I've got to think about um, the potential of uh, my queen being trapped. So my queen can't go here because of black's queen. Can't go here because of the knight. Obviously, I can't capture the knight. And I can't go anywhere on the back rank. So currently, my queen actually has no squares. So what I do is I play e5, attacking this bishop, but also crucially giving my queen an escape route to there. Okay. So now, if, um, if I do move my queen and, say, black captures my bishop, I can capture black's bishop. So black now attacks the queen. I move my queen back to e4, and uh, black could here have captured the, the bishop straight away. Then I'd have recaptured, and that would have caused black a problem. Because he'd have had to move this pawn or recapture with a pawn. Either way, it's slightly weakening the king. So black decides here to capture the knight, and I recapture with my rook, keeping this pressure on this area of the board. And now we have pawn takes pawn. So I choose here to retreat my bishop. Okay. I could have, for example, recaptured with a pawn and kept the pressure against this bishop here. But I figured that actually moving my bishop down to d3, I now have a barrage on um, h7, so the threat is queen takes h7. Now black decides to capture in the center, which maybe isn't a great move because it does allow queen takes h h7 check. King has to move. And now I throw in a sacrifice. So I sack my rook here, capturing the bishop, and forcing the pawns to double. So now black's king is looking very exposed on the back rank there. I have two nice bishops which can come in and shortly this rook as well. So first I come in with the uh, bishop. This comes with check and crucially it also allows my rook to come in if it needs to, to help with the attack. So king moves to e7, rook e1 check, king moves again Bishop moves again, check. King moves again. Now I capture with a pawn, with check. And this is uh, tempting black to recapture with the queen, which would be a mistake. Uh, black could also here have maybe captured with the king. Uh, not really attacking this, this bishop because it's defended, but if king takes, we'd have queen to e4, and uh, it's looking very, very treacherous here. So we have queen takes. And can you see the tactic here? Okay, we have a pin by the bishop, bishop to e3, and the queen is now pinned. The queen cannot move away. Uh, we have rook across. Now this is threatening rook takes e1, which would be mate, potentially. Yes, I can block with the, the bishop, but that would only block once, okay? However, I can now capture the queen with check. So because it comes with check, this move is not possible. Black has to get out of check on the next turn. So black captures the bishop, right? So now we still have this threat of rook takes e1, uh, which would 
lead to mate. So what I need to do now is I need to find a way to maintain the pressure on black. Ideally, I mean, I could always play h3 to give my king an escape square, but I don't want to do that unless I absolutely have to do it, okay? So now we have rook to e4 check. So I have a fork on the rook and the king. Okay, the king can't really capture the bishop because then I capture the rook with a discovered check by the queen. So the king moves away. Now the queen moves down to h5 check. King moves away again. And now the queen moves down to f3. Okay, so here again, I'm threatening rook takes rook with a discovered check and that would win the rook. So uh, black now uh, blocks the discovery with the knight. We swap off rooks and there's still again the threat of rook to e1 which would lead to mate. So I counter that by blocking with the bishop. So now I'm threatening bishop takes knight check. King can't recapture and so the king moves and now the queen moves again with check. King moves again and now I capture the um, the knight and what's interesting here is because I moved my queen to g3 the queen is now guarding this crucial e1 square preventing the back rank mate from the rook okay so I still haven't wasted that turn playing h3 so I capture the knight knowing that this square is now defended by the queen and the king now grabs the bishop and now only now I push h3 because I'm in a winning position so now I just want to consolidate and use my superior uh, material advantage I've got a queen for a rook and an extra pawn so now it's just a case of securing the win and making sure I don't do anything stupid and falling for a lazy back rank mate rook comes in queen checks and now I start pushing pawns rook attacks the queen and now I pin the rook against the king. So now the king can't move away because it's got to defend the rook and clearly the rook can't go anywhere because it would be putting the king in check. Okay, so we have king d6. And now I can push pawns. Black pushes a pawn, I push a5, check. No trouble at all. My king just goes to its escape square. King is now nice and safe under no threat from that rook. Rook comes back to attack the pawn and now queen to d4 actually comes with a fork on the king and the rook. King moves away, I grab the rook and my opponent resigns. Okay, so far so good. Good game, nice sacrifice with the rook to open up the king and you know all my pieces can then fly in because uh, of my lead in development. So let's go back to the beginning. e4, e5 and we'll find our way to that critical place. Vienna Gambit, Bishop comes out, not the best move. No, it is the best move. Bishop captures, and now I should have captured with a pawn. But we have this situation, Knight comes out, Bishop comes out, and now I'm ready to castle. So this Knight is now defended three times. And I've got a nice little lead. Check, King moves away. Bishop now moves back. Now this is the point, at this point I play d4 which is a good move, right? But here is where we stop and take stock and use our goldfish mentality to see if there is a better move on the board. So let's analyze the board now. So, wipe your memory. Assume this is a puzzle that you're seeing for the first time, okay? And it is white to play and basically win. Right, so. What do we know? Okay, we'll start by highlighting any undefended pieces in Black's camp. Okay, and this is, yeah, this is what I see. So the rooks are undefended, which is usual until the, uh, all the minor pieces have come out. Um, everything else is defended. Now, what is under attack? Okay, or what's defending what? We've got like the rook's defending that, the queen's defending that, and that, and the king. The queen's defending that pawn, the pawn's defending the bishop, right? 
uh, rooks defending that pawn and the king is defending that pawn. So from this pattern, we can see that the, I think the significant <clears throat> spot on the board is this pawn here on f7, right? So this pawn is defended only by the king at this point. Now, let's look at the attacks that white has. Okay, so we've got knight is attacking the bishop, but not really because the knight can't capture the bishop right now because of the threat of this uh, pin. So the bishop would capture the queen and that would simply lose material. Okay, in addition, we've got the bishop attacking f7, right? Now, the bishop can't really capture f7 right now because the king would simply recapture and um, again, that would lose material. Not much. I mean, I'd get a pawn and I would prevent my opponent from castling. Okay, so, so far so good. However, we also have, let's look now at um, discovered attacks, right? So we've got potentially the queen is looking at this bishop, but through the knight. And should the knight move, that bishop is actually undefended. We can see it's highlighted, it's undefended. Okay. In addition, there's another potential discovery with the rook on our old friend f7. Okay. So <laughs> I know the board's looking pretty complicated right now. Um, but what can we see from this, right? So the bishop is, is actively attacking f7. Um, and the rook is potentially attacking f7 should this knight ever move away from f3. Okay, the knight is also potentially attacking this bishop on e5. Okay, so if the knight moves, it's attacking e5. And if it attacks e5, then it's also attacking um, f7 as well. So, can you see a sequence of moves that would be pretty much winning for white? So I'll give you a moment, look at the board, this is a puzzle, and, and this is really the reason why puzzles are so useful. It's because puzzles teach you to approach the game using the goldfish mentality. Okay? This is a board. There is the potential of um, something winning, right? which is what puzzles are all about. Either gain significant material or checkmate your opponent, stuff like that. Um, so puzzles are just brilliant for that for that very reason, they, they teach you to, okay, there's something here. And if you can take that exact mindset into every turn that you play in chess, you'll be a better chess player. That's the point of puzzles. Okay, so puzzles are teaching you to see just a little bit deeper into a position. So have you found the winning move for white? Okay, well, let's work it through. So, the best move, and this is what the engine told me after the game when I analysed it, Bishop takes f7 check. And now, clearly, this looks like a sacrifice, but let's say King takes Bishop, okay? Now, we have the stunning Knight takes e5, right? And this is a double check. The king is under attack by a knight and a rook. Okay, so what we know about knight checks on the king is that you can't interpose a piece. And if you can't interpose a piece or capture the attacker, the king has to move. The other thing is that in a double check, the king has to move, right? because the check is coming in from two directions. You can't capture both attackers and you can't block both checks either, particularly when one of the checks is coming from a knight. So pawn takes knight is not possible because the king is still in check by the rook. So this king now has to move. And um, wherever this king moves, I've got queen takes bishop, okay? And even if I lose my knight, then I'm in a very strong position. This king is now exposed and in the middle of the board. So where can the king go to? Okay, can't go here, here, here. So he's only got four squares to go to. One, two, three, four. If he goes to here, I've got 
queen takes bishop check, so that move is no good. Uh, let's say the king goes to here, g8. Probably again, uh, queen takes bishop, or even knight takes bishop, thereby I save my knight. Okay, and it's simply a winning position. So the same goes for either of these two as well. Uh, I've got knight takes bishop, and that would be completely winning. So let's just go back again. Okay, so the bishop moves to here with check. Now the bishop moves away. How do we figure this out? So we're not looking just at direct attacks, but we're also looking at indirect attacks. Okay, so there are three moves here, all of which threaten f7. And it's, it's simply a case of considering all of your potential moves, right? So I played, I played d4, which is not, not bad whatsoever, right? But I never even considered, I don't think, this move. Because if I should have seen if king recaptures discovery, right, with a fork on these two pieces. So when you're using this goldfish approach, right, when you're analyzing uh, what's undefended, we also want to be looking at what's under defended. Okay, so you, you can highlight the undefended pieces, that's fine. It's not a problem at all. Okay, you highlight the undefended pieces. But when you're thinking about attacks, thinking one, a potential two, a potential attack on the bishop, and you've got a very real attack there on that bishop, okay? So these are all options that I've got, all strings to my bow, all tools in my toolbox. And if I'd have thought, sack the bishop on f7, if king takes, discovery, and this is the whole reason why my rook's there in the first place, you know? So, there you go. I want to um, just invite you to add a layer onto your goldfish uh, approach, which is not just looking at the direct attacks and the direct threats, but also then thinking one layer be uh, beyond that, that if something moves, what else is there? So we're looking at things like discoveries, right? And... Uh, particularly knight takes bishop is attacking there and attacking there right so there you go that is goldfish chess level two um i hope that you can apply this in your own games and if you find it's working for you please let me know in the comments thank you for watching please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and i'll see you soon